Hello there, I'm Dr. Sue Mortar, and welcome to The Short Answer. I'm speaking to you on behalf of Mortar Institute here in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I've been teaching a a small group healing intensive here. And we also have uh, this evening with us an amazing group of people uh, that have been in my life. Many of them have been in my life for years and years and years. So they're associated with the clinic here locally and they're involved in the book study clubs regarding the energy codes and a variety of, of reasons that they come together. And I get to be with them here uh, during the short answer. The same, see, 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 see. There, there. There's some really, really amazing people, and uh, I'm so honored, really, in my life to be surrounded by so many people of such caliber, of such quality. Um, you know, what I love about the Midwest is that, that people do what they say, and they say what they do, and they're loving, and they're kind, and they're genuine, and they're very earnestly interested in uh, rock-solid information. Not to say that both of the coasts of our country aren't that way, um, but... <laughs> Uh, but I, I just want to say to the coasts of our country that we've got some really good ideas that come out of the Midwest, too. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so what gets to happen is I get to go from coast to coast and all across, and I get to come home to Indianapolis every once in a while. And when I get to do that, things, um, things just feel magical to me because I've been in and out of Indianapolis, but mostly in Indianapolis for the last, I don't know, 30 five-ish year, long time, and, um, and it just feels so wonderful and so warm for me every time I drive down these streets and watch everything growing and maturing and things evolving. I know that you know this, and it's part of our short answer today, is to really be in touch with something that's been unfolding in your life all along, and the more that you can get in touch with it, uh, the more you can harness it and, and, more importantly, magnify it. And it has to do with the healing energies. But before we dive into that, I have just a couple of announcements that I want to let all of you know what's happening, what's coming up. And, and then we're going to dive into some, some amazing healing conversation. So uh, some of the things that are coming up you know, very soon is the uh, Level 3 of the Energy Codes coursework here in Indianapolis. And it is September 26th through 29th. So if you haven't been to Level 3 and you've been to 1 and 2, or you've been to 1 and you'd like to come to 3, you can go to 2 after that. Or if you're an alumni and you're not signed up for that, you might want to plug into it. We have an amazing program that is coming together. I can always feel the energy ahead of time. And, and I'm loving what's happening with this conversation. We just had a healing retreat in Indianapolis, the summer healing retreat, and the small group intensive uh, that followed that. And it is, that's kind of what we're in at this time. And the conversation is just f flourishing with rich, deep, intimate uh, ways to heal. And when we're in, plugged in to self-healing on this level, nothing can stop us. And that's part of our conversation that's coming up on the short answer in just a moment. I also wanted to mention that something that is near and dear to my heart and a very big thing that's happening here in Indianapolis in November is the yoga, the Body Awake Yoga Retreat. And you don't have to be involved in the yoga teacher training in order to attend the yoga retreat. And if you're interested in healing faster, building circuits faster, and being in the flow of what is really intended to be a self-healer and to wake up, what Body Awake Yoga does is it anchors the consciousness in the core of your being, which is what the Energy Codes book is all about. And it shows you how to do that like rapid fire. It really exponentially increases your ability. In fact, the next book that I write, uh, I'm currently working on two of them. Them, and one of them is going to be about uh, the whole process of body awake yoga. But the best way to get involved in it is to jump in. You don't have to have experience with yoga. You can just come in and we're going to walk you by the hand and show you how all these different yoga positions, it doesn't matter if you're good at it or experienced it or at it or anything, uh, we're going to show you how each of those different poses correlate to different parts of your brain and different parts of your endocrine system and your healing system, your respiratory system, the vascular system, the immune system, all of this, the digestive system, each of these systems as well as the high brain centers in your nervous system are all being activated by these different yoga positions. So if you ever were interested in becoming uh, more pristine at self-healing and becoming more flexible, of course, and fluid in your life, um, then that would be something for you to do, the Body Awake Yoga uh, Healing Retreat. Then I also just want to announce quickly that we have some level one live courses of the Level 1 Energy Codes coursework where you come in live and we're working with you one-on-one -on -one or one-on-one -on however many people are there, but lots of attention, making sure that you know how to do some of the practices in the book and giving you lots of experiential exercises where you get to see how they implement, how they are implemented and how you can be changed. So 
the level one of the Energy Codes coursework coupled with the uh, manifesting day, which is just an introductory, introductory trial day if you want to plug in and see if it's something you would be interested in. Uh, there is one in Phoenix in October, October 11th uh, through the 13th, in Oakland, California, and up in the Bay Area, November 8th through 10th, and in Los Angeles, March 20th through the 22nd, and Denver, Colorado, April 3rd through the 5th. Um, uh, so, I'll be there. I hear it's going to be great. So, uh, <laughs> uh, join me. We'll see. We'll check it out. Okay, so you guys ready to roll? Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, so we're going to dive into what is called the short answer. And the short answer is me just giving you like um, a drop of information, something that can stick with you, that you can utilize throughout the day or throughout the month or what have you. So that you can better your ability to be your wholeness and your fullness on the surface of the planet in life. That you can be a self-healer and that you can be a creative genius and that you can operate in a manner that doesn't question yourself all the time. And so that you can learn to engage with others without <coughs> reacting and rather just coming forward as the one who's generating your life experience rather than having to react and respond to everything. So if you have a drink, let's have a drink together. So you should have some water if you're watching, okay? Not that kind of drink. This is just water, okay? So, so what we want to do is is recognize how healing takes place. And, and first, I want you to know that the energy codes is not just about healing. It's about healing your life on every level, of course. But it's also about moving into creatorship. It's about moving into you knowing yourself as good and right and true and aligned in the world without being filled with self-doubt or insufficiency or inadequacy or, or being cloaked in shame or guilt or, or fear, for that matter, that these kinds of vibrations are not the wholeness of our being. And the wholeness of our being is this blazing bonfire that is actually fed by the energies that I just listed off. That if we throw those energies onto our heart, our heart blazes bigger, and the next thing you know, we're able to manage ourselves in all kinds of circumstances without hesitation. And we're able to be creative and even be a leader in our, in our relationships, in our communities, in whatever capacity that we would so choose, and we're able to heal ourselves. And all of it has to do with us knowing a version of ourselves that we have lost touch with or that maybe we've never been in touch with uh, because we land here and, as you know, we kind of splat and our mind goes one way, and our body goes another, and our breath goes another way. And the next thing you know, we're operating as only a portion of who we are. And we get attached to the mind because it's the one that has all the activity running through it. And it's kind of like bright, shiny things. We're attracted to that. So us, pure awareness, gets hooked on to the mind, and we think that's who we are. So the mind is based on partialness. So meaning it's not the whole of your being. It's only a part of who you are. And if you're identified as the mind, then you walk around feeling constantly like there's something missing. Like there's, you know, I feel like uh, I'm missing something. I'm inadequate. I'm in, insufficient in some way. I'm not sure what's going on here. I just feel nervous. I feel like I'm supposed to get something or do something or learn something or go somewhere or become more. And all of that is kind of a waste of our energy. Uh, it drives us through life, and if you get driven by that long enough, it will eventually lead you to surrendering that journey and just sitting down into full acceptance of who you are. Now, it might sound something like, oh, forget it. I've been trying all this time. I'm just not even going to try anymore. I'm just going to sit down here and just be. And the universe is like, whew, thought they'd never give in, right? Thank you. Right? Because that's what we were supposed to be doing all along. But we dial into this other frequency that, that, that is tuned into this idea that I'm not enough and I need to do something different. And so we were speaking just before we got started this evening. And someone said, you know, I'd love to hear about love. And, and it just so happens that love is the key to healing this splat. The, to sewing it back together, to melding it back together. So for you to be the alchemist that pulls back your body and your mind and your breath and gets you back in touch with your true essential self versus living in your mind and your protective personality or your performing personality or the ego. But as you know, I don't like to call it the ego because nobody likes to have an ego. So I call it the protective personality and we, we seem to get some real good work done, right? Um, so, so there we are. 
So when we're identified as that protective personality, it is uh, no fun. We are guarded, defensive. We are trying to get other people to understand who we are and to think like us and to see it our way. And we're trying to show them that we're trying to help and we're trying to show them how, how if they'd only see it this way or that way or this way, that everything would be fine. And all the while, they're like, actually, I am fine. You're the one that's working so hard to try to get me to be different. And so what we want to do is kick it into neutral and drop into our soulful selves and recognize that all I have to do is experience love more often than I've been experiencing it. Now, the protective personality thinks that that love comes from out there because when we're in the splat, we seek the love. We got the love from maybe our parents, maybe our teachers, maybe some neighbors, maybe somebody was there for us that gave us the love. Maybe it was grandma, maybe it was, maybe it was a favorite aunt or some combination of those things. But by and large, our circuits got established to receive love from out there in here. And the key is that it is what we're made of. So let's just go back here. If we look at the biggest picture amongst pictures, amongst all pictures, there's the unified field of energy. It is the combination of all things and, and all non-things. It's the manifest and the unmanifest world. It's basically heaven, the divine. It's, everything's there. Nothing is missing. And then when you start compressing energy, as we know in the book, everything is energy. And everything is energy just vibrating at different frequencies. And so when you take the unified field, as with everything else, when you start compressing energy, if you compress the energy enough, you eventually get to physical matter, physical form, like this chair I'm sitting in or this flip chart right here, that, or your body, my body. We are just energy compressed into a body. And so when we reverse that and start decompressing and decompressing and decompressing and decompressing, we start to move out to where there is more space between the particles that were compressed together to create the physical matter. So if we open up the spaciousness there and allow more space between the particles, there's an energy that can be felt and experienced running through that. And the more we open and the more we open and the more we open, the more subtle little nuances of that energy can be perceived rushing through our system. And if you keep expanding enough, you get to this most expansive energy that we call love. So let me show you how that, show you how that works. So we have the unified field and we start compressing it and compressing, 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 and compressing to get to physical matter. If we go all the way back out, the very first compression that we press onto the energy creates a vibration. And that vibration is the vibrational frequency that we call love. So when you're in the state of love, you're in the most expanded version of the manifest world that you can possibly be in, which is why it feels so good when somebody does something or says something that just opens your heart, that just melts you open. Or even better yet, and I do say even better yet, if you remember out of nowhere in the midst of your contraction, in the midst of your focused concentration about the seriousness of life, and I'm not saying that life isn't serious, but it can be joyful and serious. It can be joyful and matter all at the same time. When you're in that, if you can find yourself remembering, hey, I don't have to be contracted to have a good decision made. In fact, the less contracted I am, the more I'm available to these subtle nuances of energies rushing through my system. And they'll rush through my system and rise up to my consciousness. And I'll actually make a decision based on more information if I'm in a loving state than the information that I can perceive if I'm stuck in my head. If I'm stuck in my head, I'm not available to the energies that are rushing up through my system, trying to arrive all the way up here to my consciousness through the heart, through love, through the love vibrational frequency. So let me just back up again and say this. There are 11 billion bits of information bombarding your system every millisecond. It's coming in. And that information is unconditional truth. It is divine in nature. It's not filtered through a personality. It's no one's opinion. It's like God source stuff. Okay. It's unaltered. It's supreme. It's multidimensional. It's as high of a frequency as it gets. And it's rushing your way all the time. 
The question is, how much of that are you allowing yourself to perceive? If you're locked down in your mind and you're thinking and you're driving things and you're trying to control the circumstances, you're missing out. Because when you do that, you compress yourself beyond the degree that you're supposed to be living in. When you open up by remembering love, love automatically takes you to this expanded state, even in the middle of an important decision-making process, for instance. So... The idea is, can I be in this loving, expanded state, trusting that the universe is, is providing me with billions of bits of information, because it is, measurably, it is delivering billions of bits of information that are unaltered, and they're not arriving to your head, they're arriving to your gut, and then they rise up from your gut and get filtered through the brain and your heart. So there's a brain in your gut that translates that information into impulses that become chemical impulses and neurological impulses, and they filter up through the heart, which energetically charges them into a different frequency. And then those messages can transcend your primitive brain and arrive all the way to the high brain executive centers where you're driven to come up with ideas and to make decisions, and those decisions and ideas are going to be more aptly aligned with a universal truth than if you started in your head and tried to work it the other way around. So your head compresses and focuses, your heart expands and opens, your gut receives the truth all the time. So when you make a decision based on your gut and you allow love to be present, you're in the highest vibrational truth that is possible. And if you allow that to come up to your consciousness and, and serve to influence the decisions that you make, it means loving yourself and trusting your gut, self-love and trusting your gut. Those two things are the two things that I would say are the number one reason that people heal. They just start doing that. The invitation is that you begin doing that consciously and intentionally rather than having to wait for life to exhaust you to the point that you say, fine, I just quit. I'm just going to sit here and be. And then all of a sudden, bing, there comes a good idea. Unfortunately, you wasted 30 years to get to that point. So we don't have to do that. We can start now by realizing when I breathe in my belly, I'm opening up to this gut level wisdom. When I breathe in my heart, I'm opening up to filtering the most expansive version of that information all the way up to my conscious attention. And in that state, I not only heal in my body, I create collective, collaborative ideas and projects that serve not only us, but serve the planet and serve our communities and tends to have us caring and being conscientious about peoples all over the world because we're all in this together. And until we realize that love is more important than anything, we're going to suffer on some level or another. So love is the highest vibrational frequency because it exists right at the edge of no compression at all, the unmanifest world, and the very first compressions that start to materialize all the way to the couch that you sit on, the chair that you may be sitting on right now. So choose love, and it will choose uh, for you the most expansive version of life that you can possibly imagine. So we're going to be diving into that and a lot of other things that are super interesting as we dive into the master class next. So if you're a gold member... You'll be able to tune into that in just a few moments. If you're not, you can click on the button below the screen that you're watching right now and get plugged in and be able to join us um, in just a few minutes in the master class. Until then, uh, many, many blessings to you all uh, and namaste. Yeah.